Hi Year One! I'm going to read the next chapter of James and the Giant Peach. So we've got chapter 23 and in chapter 22 um, James tied all the seagulls to the giant peach and it took 502 seagulls didn't it, to lift into the air um, and it began climbing towards the heavens. So chapter 23. In a flash everybody was up on top. Oh, isn't it beautiful? they cried. What a marvellous feeling. Goodbye sharks. Oh boy, this is the way to travel. Miss Spider, who was literally squealing with excitement, grabbed the centipede. So I'm going to sneeze. Oh, pardon me. Miss Spider, who was literally squealing with excitement, grabbed the centipede by the waist and the two of them started dancing round and round the peach stem together. The earthworm stood upon his tail and did a sort of wriggle of joy all by himself. The old green grasshopper kept hopping higher and higher in the air. The ladybird rushed over and shook James warmly by the hand. The glowworm, who at the best of times was a very shy and silent creature, sat glowing with pleasure near the tunnel entrance. Even the silkworm, looking white and thin and completely exhausted, kept creeping out of the tunnel to watch this miraculous ascent. Up and up they went, and soon they were as high as the top of a church steeple above the ocean. I'm a bit worried about the peach, James said to the others, as soon as all the dancing and the shouting had stopped. I wonder how much damage those sharks have done to it underneath. It's quite impossible to tell from up here. Why don't I go over to the side and make an inspection, Miss Spider said. It will be no trouble at all, I assure you. Let me see the peach. And without waiting for an answer, she quickly produced a length of, sh of silk thread and attached the end of it to the peach stem. I'll be back in a jiffy, she said. And then she walked calmly over to the edge of the peach and jumped off paying out the thread behind her as she fell. The others crowded anxiously around the place where she had gone over. Wouldn't it be dreadful if the thread broke, the ladybird said. There was a rather long silence. Are you all right, Miss Spider? shouted the old green grasshopper. Yes, thank you. I'm coming up now. And up she came, climbing foot over foot of the silk thread. And at the same time, tucking the thread back cleverly into her body as she climbed past it. Is it awful? Is it all eaten away? Are there great holes in it everywhere? Miss Spider clambered back on the deck with a pleased but also puzzled look on her face. You won't believe this, she said, but actually there's hardly any damage down there at all. The peach is almost untouched. There are just a few tiny pieces out of it here and there, but nothing more. You must be mistaken, James told her. I promise you I'm not, Miss Spider answered. But there were hundreds of sharks around us. They churned the water into a froth. We saw their great mouths opening and shutting. I don't care what you saw, Miss Spider answered. They certainly didn't do much damage to the peach. Then why did we start sinking? The centipede asked. Perhaps we didn't start sinking. Perhaps we were all so frightened that we simply imagined it, said the old green grasshopper. This, in point of fact, was closer to the truth than any of them knew. A shark, you see, has an extremely long, sharp nose and its mouth is set very awkwardly underneath its face and a long way back. This makes it more or less impossible for it to get its teeth into a vast, smooth, curving surface such as the side of a peach. Even if the creature turns onto its back, it still can't do it, because the nose always gets in the way. If you have ever seen a small dog trying to get its teeth into an enormous ball, then you will be able to imagine roughly how it was with the sharks and the peach. It must have been some kind of magic! The holes must have cleaned up by themselves, said the ladybird. Oh look, there's a ship below us, shouted James. 
everybody rushed to the side and peered over. None of them had ever seen a ship before. It looks like a big one. It's got three funnels. You can even see people on the decks. Let's wave to them. Do you think they can see us? Neither James nor any of the others knew it, but the ship that was now passing beneath them was actually the Queen Mary sailing out of the English Channel on her way to America. And on the bridge of the Queen Mary, the astonished captain was standing with a group of his officers, all of them gaping at the great round ball hovering ahead. I don't like it, the captain said. Nor do I, said the first officer. Do you think it's following us? said the second officer. I tell you, I don't like it, muttered the captain. It could be dangerous. That's it, it's a secret weapon. Holy cats! Send a message to the Queen at once. The country must be warned, and give me my telescope. The first officer handed the telescope to the captain. The captain put it to his eye. There's birds everywhere. The whole sky is teeming with birds. What in the world are they doing? And wait, wait a second. There are people on it. I can see them moving. There's a... Do I have this thing focused right? It looks like a little boy in short trousers. Yes, I can see a little boy in short trousers standing up there. And there's a... There's a... a some sort of giant ladybird. Now just a minute, Captain, the first officer said. And a colossal green grasshopper. Captain, Captain please, said the first officer. And a mammoth spider. Oh dear, he's been at the whiskey again, said the second officer. And an enormous, a simply enormous centipede. Call the ship's doctor, he's not very well. A moment later, the great round ball disappeared into a cloud and the people on the ship never saw it again. And that's the end of I'll See You Later.